So how can you overcome imposter syndrome and actually start calling yourself a calligrapher? Hello, hello, beautiful bosses. My name is Rosie and I am the calligrapher behind Wandercrafter and the creator and coach of the Craft Academy. This is actually a very common question when it comes to our coaching calls, so I figured I could tackle it with you. So this question literally comes up almost every single week, and that is, when do I start calling myself a calligrapher? Do you call yourself one when you've mastered Spencerian or even pointed pen or brush pen? Or is it when you've sold a piece of handmade lettering art like a card or wedding vows? Or is it after 5,000 hours of lettering practice? Or maybe even after you've taught a calligraphy class? By definition, Calligraphy means the art of writing beautifully. It actually doesn't specify what specific tool or style that you have to use. Secondly, a calligrapher is one who practices the art of calligraphy. So, as you can see, there's no real hard definition on when or how you can actually start calling yourself a calligrapher. So, I like to tell my students not to restrain yourself with these little nuances and definitions. Personally, I don't think there is a right time or answer to start calling yourself a calligrapher. In fact, you probably already are a calligrapher and haven't really mustered the courage to call yourself one because of imposter syndrome. In my program, The Craft Academy, we actually help calligraphers utilize the imposter syndrome and use it as a tool to create their success. If you're interested in learning more, use the link in the description and book a strategy call with me because I would love to get to know you. I actually love when this question comes up in the Craft Academy meetings because I also struggled with it for years. So when I can relate, it actually makes it that much more impactful. When I was working as a full-time pharmacist and had my calligraphy business just as a side hustle, I always told people that I do calligraphy or I sell calligraphy items. It wasn't until my business was a little over two years old and someone asked me as a follow-up question, so you're a calligrapher then, right? And I said, oh yeah, um, I guess I am a calligrapher, you're right. And from that moment on, I tried to introduce myself as a calligrapher as often as I could. I even practiced it in front of the mirror, in front of my significant other, and the secret is, the more I said it, the more I believed it, and the easier it actually became to identify as a calligrapher. Eventually, calligrapher became my only occupation and title, and pharmacist phased out. So you see, repetition is actually key. So what else prevents people from calling themselves a calligrapher? I actually believe that the answer is in your mindset, and the biggest culprit holding you back is likely imposter syndrome. And this imposter syndrome might be preventing you even more than just calling yourself a calligrapher, it could be holding you back from actually selling calligraphy things or pitching yourself in order to work with your dream clients. So let's get to the root of imposter syndrome. It's actually defined as the overall feeling of inadequacy despite evident success. And this could look like having high pressure not to fail at something or feeling like a fake and that you're just getting really lucky or it's not repeatable, or that you have to downplay your success so you don't have to own it so people don't expect it from you. Do any of these examples resonate you? Because if they do, I would love to know in the comments. For me, imposter syndrome was the biggest hurdle to overcome, especially since having a calligraphy career was so unheard of, and having a doctorate was way more prestigious. Creativity was not the biggest priority growing up as a first-generation Asian American, and this lesson was so ingrained in me that it took me about six months to a year after paying off my loans to actually pursue my calligraphy business full time. But more on that in a separate video. So if you have any questions, definitely feel free to drop those below. Now, how do we actually get rid of the nagging voice that is the imposter? Let me tell you the biggest secret. Imposter syndrome never really goes away, but you can make it easier to handle and even use it as a tool. Even the top performers like Maya Angelou and Michelle Obama still had imposter syndrome no matter how successful they got. It's the same for us as creatives and entrepreneurs. There's always going to be something that is going to hold us back because we don't feel like we're good enough, but we are. 
Let me give you an example. Let's pretend like your success is a race car, while your imposter syndrome is the brake and your confidence is the gas. When you want to feel safe and comfortable where you are, you press the brakes so you don't have to get anywhere or go forward. But if you want to drive the success, you actually have to push the gas. And if you continue to brake the car, then you will always be stagnant. But if you want to release the brakes and start revving the car very slowly, then you'll feel a little more and more comfortable with driving. Eventually, you might even be able to take your foot off the brakes entirely and be zooming down the freeway, safely of course. I like to think that success is the same way. The reason why I love this analogy is because your imposter and confidence actually works together to make a viable system. You truly can't have one without the other, so why not use both factors to your advantage? The best part about using this analogy is that when it comes down to it, you have control over your imposter, not the other way around. And I actually hope that this helps you visualize the balance of your imposter syndrome and confidence. I like to tell my students to use that imposter as a motivator to reach the goals that they actually set for themselves, instead making it their strongest tool and their asset in order to go for the gold and get the goals that they want. Whether it's mastering a new letter form, reaching a desired income, or even pitching and getting connected with their dream brands. So I hope this video actually helps you manage your imposter syndrome a little bit better and actually gives you the confidence to call yourself a calligrapher. If this video resonated with you, I highly encourage you to book a call with me and I would love to get to know you and where you would like to go with your own business. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos and I'll see you in the next video. Happy engraving everyone!